happy Friday to you. We're so glad to be with you. It is good to be with you. And you know what else is good? The Bible says it is good and pleasant when brothers and sisters come together in unity. And so that's what we hope to have happen here today. We're going to have some good and challenging conversations because our goal is to always help you grow closer to God, build you up in your faith so that you can go out and be an influence for Jesus in your sphere of influence. So I'm Anna and I'm here today with Sydney and Matt. And Sydney, we have just a great guest and conversation coming yes, up. This is like really important because you know, in our society is so divided in so many ways, whether ethnically, socioeconomically, or politically. And those tensions are even prevalent in the church at large and in our local congregations. And in a moment, you're going to hear from Pastor Alan Han of Allegheny Center Alliance Church. His congregation in Pittsburgh North Side neighborhood is a diverse community of believers walking out and modeling love. And he's going to share a special message God has placed on his heart about unity. You know, Anna and Matt, this is something that is like so near and dear to my heart. You know, I think it's so important, Matt, that in these times, in these season, we have to live and walk out together, no matter what we look like, our colors, our, our you know, political affiliations, whatever it is, it's so important for us to be one in Christ. Amen. Yeah, I, I, you know, I love this topic and I'm with you guys. You know, this is so needed, especially in the day and age that we live in. And the Bible talks countless about unity. I mean, God commands a blessing where there's unity you know, and the world will know who he is by our love for one another. And so I'm thrilled and, and I'm sure this is going to intrigue every one of you watching at home. But the importance of the t or today and age that we live in, why we need to be unified as a body of believers, not just one church, not just the church within the four walls, but as the body of Christ as a whole. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, well, I think that it's so easy to see today that there are many angry people in this world. And that sadly is even in the body of believers. We have to get this strife out of our families, out of the bodies of, that we worship with, because strife is like a poison that kills. And if we want to be empowered as believers to be able to impact this world for Christ, we have to get that strife out and come together in unity. You know, and I like how you said that it's like strife is a poison that kills. And one of the ways you want to kill all that poison, go to a church where people don't look like you, they don't <laughs> talk like you, they don't act like you, and do life together. You know, Anna, Matt, like one of the things, experiences I had at Temple University when I went to college, it was like my first experience going to and being part of a really diverse congregation. It was called Epiphany Fellowship. And I mean, it was every color, every nation, every tribe, and every tongue up in there. And the way that we would worship together and the way that I would just hear messages and we had to walk things out and even, you know, Philadelphia is a very diverse city. I mean, it just really changed my perspective on everything. And I was just like, you know, let the kingdom come on earth, like and on heaven as it is on the earth. Like we need this. You know, I think of Revelation when it talks about at the end, like Matt, every nation, every tribe, every tongue will bow before Jesus. So we need to get some heaven practice up in okay. here because I don't know, we don't know when Jesus is coming, the time or hour, but Matt, like I know like your heart Part two is just like there's something just so beautiful when you see and you're like worshiping and living and doing life with people that are just so different. It just it touches your heart. Yeah, you know, I love that you're talking about on diversity, diverse. I mean, that's what heaven should look like. And that's what heaven does look like. Yeah. You know, if we're to bring heaven here down on earth, well, we've got to diversify our perspective, our preferences. Matter of fact, I don't think that God has a preference in his style of worship. You know what he looks like, his style, anything. It's just like you said, every tribe, every tongue, every cringe coming together to represent what heaven looks like. And I believe that's what the world needs. Yeah. That's what's going to attract people to Jesus by man, our love for one another. But man, just laying down our agendas, our wants, yeah. our preferences and saying, hey, I appreciate what you bring to the yeah. table. I appreciate what you bring to the table. This is what heaven looks like. Anna. Yeah. And that laying down is yeah. a key thing that humility because so often when that division is there, when that strife is there, the pride is at the root of that. And so Christians are to be humble. We are to know who we are in Christ and know that we have so much value. And yet we need to remember that those around us are equally of value and that God has called us to love them. And not only within the church, but also within our homes, like 
that can be a convicting conversation too, just about having that unity there because that actually impacts our service in the body and in this world. Yeah, and I just want to say like really think what about like my marriage is this like unity. I mean, like my husband and I come from, we're ethnically different. We come from different backgrounds. So I was like, Jesus, I'm, he's like, he working it out. <laughs> so you know, I have to model unity in my home every single day. Well, when we come back in 60 seconds, Pastor Alan Hanna of Allegheny Center Alliance Church shares a message about modeling perfect unity through the power of Jesus. We'll be right back. Are you feeling distant from God? Could it be because you're ignoring His Word? Maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe the long books and strange names feel overwhelming. Perhaps you just don't like reading. Whatever the case, How to Eat Your Bible will help you cultivate an appetite for lifelong study of God's Word. Find practical guidance for overcoming the hurdles that have kept you from making Bible study a regular part of your life. Pastor Nate Pickowitz also includes a unique seven-year Bible plan so that you can apply what you've learned and continue drawing near to God as you consume His Word. Request your copy of How to Eat Your Bible when you donate your best gift to CTVN. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. You know, nearly half a century ago, Martin Luther King Jr. called 11 a.m. on Sunday morning the most segregated hour in America. And even though there's been some strides in the body of Christ to close this gap, we still see deep division of church, whether it's ethnically, socioeconomically, and politically. And for Alan Hanna, the lead pastor of Allegheny Center Alliance Church, his congregation is on mission to follow Jesus in a diverse community. Pastor Alan has a message God put on his heart that he would like to share with you today about unity. Pastor Alan, we're so glad to have you with us today. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for the invite. Well, we're so happy to have you in person with us. And, you know, before we get into unity and just talking about how Jesus wants us to model that out, can you just share a little bit about you? A little about me. A little so, about you. <laughs> I'll try not to go back too far, but I will start at the beginning. So I spent the majority of my childhood in Newcastle, just north of Pittsburgh. My father was a pastor, have a lot of family who was in ministry. And I'll never forget uh, leaving Newcastle when I was 16 in the back of a car going, I will never live in Pittsburgh again. (laughs) And um, God had other plans. And about 13 years ago, he called my wife and I back to the Pittsburgh area. And this is home. We absolutely love it. And two and a half years ago, God called my wife and I to become the new lead pastors at ACAC in the north side. We pastored Rock Dilliman, who many know very well. He pastored there for 36 years. He still attends our congregation. And as a part of there, we had breakfast this week and it is just watching God work at ACAC, even in succession. And there's a lot of that happening in our, in our city, even now in churches, but um, it's been a beautiful thing. And, um, and I love this topic of diversity. So you're, you're teeing it up perfect. Oh yeah, well, I, this is like, I know like one of our favorite topics is so needed to discuss and talk about, but can you just tell us a little bit about ACAC? You know, I've been there like years ago mm-hmm. and just, it's beautiful to see like the diversity, the unity that's happening. So you can talk to us about the culture of your church and how you're literally like you're modeling it out. Yeah, well, first and foremost, I, you know, ACAC wasn't always that way. The congregation's 128 years old. Um, It's been on the north side. It wasn't always a diverse congregation. In fact, it was anything but. And the Lord really convicted my predecessor, Rock Dilliman, in the 80s that ACAC needed to repent because it wasn't reflective of its community. And so years upon years, and the story is after repenting and praying, it was 11 years before the first African-American walked through the front doors. And now it is a completely different picture today. Um, Our mission is following Jesus and diverse community. We are very um, intentional about it. We're not shy about it. And we believe it's biblical that God's kingdom, you talked about it earlier, in the first segment that from Genesis to Revelation, God's kingdom is a diverse kingdom. And so we walk on, we walk in that. It's not always easy, um, but we know that we are better for it. And Matt, as you said, God commands blessing and um, it's so strategic and important to us. Well, this is, this is awesome. You know, we got a scripture today, and I feel like this is a good starting point as we're on this topic right now. But yeah. this is out of um, or John chapter 17, verse 23. And the New Living Translation says, I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect 
unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. I feel like, you know, because you're a senior pastor now, you have to take this personal. Mm -hmm. And in order to represent unity, if you want your body to be unified, it starts with you, right? So how does maybe this scripture uh, minister to you and, and, and why do you carry the responsibility of that? So John 17, that chapter is, um, I believe, one of the most significant chapters, not for just us as a diverse congregation, but for the body of Christ. And here's why, to give, I'm a pastor now, so I'm gonna preach a little bit. Um, Preach. This is, this is, that chapter is moments before Jesus is arrested and crucified on a cross, Mm -hmm. days before. And he prays. And he prays for three things. He prays for himself. He prays for the disciples who are walking with him in that moment. And then he prays for his future disciples, you and I. Now, just that thought alone, if you think that 2,000 years ago, in that moment, Jesus was thinking of every one of us right now. And he prayed for us. That alone is an astounding thought. But what does he pray for? Out of everything he could pray for us, he prays for unity. He prays that we would be one. And why I believe that chapter is so important is that Jesus connects the unity in the body of Christ to his mission, to our mission of um, sharing the good news of the gospel. Because in there he says, As, may they be one so that the world would know. He says that our unity, that when we love each other, when we're unified in the body, that the world, the unbeliever, will know that he's the son of God and that the father loves them as much as he loves us. And so when you look at the body of Christ, and we've talked about this, um, not only do we live in a divided and a polarized culture and world, um, the church has failed miserably because we've followed suit. We have, the body of Christ is polarized. The body of Christ is divided. We're divided over politics. Um, We're divided over race. We're divided over perspectives and opinions. And the enemy knows this, and we play right into his hands. And so unity is directly connected Uh, to me with the great commission of sharing the gospel. And that's what Jesus prays for. And so, you know, I I believe we all have opinions. We all have perspectives. And one of the things that I cherish about our congregation is that on Saturday night, on Sunday morning, when we gather on Monday through Friday, when we walk life, you have Republicans and Democrats, you have black, white, Hispanic, Asian, you have generational diversity in there. You have socioeconomic diversity. And no, it's not easy. I mean, you walk through our congregation during a political season, it can get a little hairy. Um, but, But Jesus is praying because he knows how significant it is. And for us as the body of Christ, our unity is directly connected to our mission to share the gospel. And it's a, it, it's a, it's a signal to the world, uh, as Jesus said, that he's the son of God and that the father loves them as much as he loves us. Yeah. And so as a pastor and as a leadership team that holds this value of unity, how do you help your congregation as individuals to search their hearts to, to work towards that unity? Yeah. We have a phrase, uh, I say it often from the pulpit, um, you have to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Um, And so, you know, even at ACAC, um, where we follow Jesus in diverse community, as a pastor, I have to continue to remind our congregation of who God has called us to be. Um, And so there are times that it gets uncomfortable. And so we preach on it. Uh, We remind, hey, this is who God has called us to be. Again, I go back to intentionality. Um, I could go into multiple ways, but we are so intentional in how we staff and how we communicate things in our worship. Um, Everything we do, we have to remember that um, we are diverse. And so generationally, again, socioeconomically, ethnically, politically, uh, we talk about those things as a leadership team. We talk about them um, as a staff and just are very intentional in doing so. What do you think is at the root of our issues with other people or with their beliefs? What, what's underneath all that? We unite in everything else but Jesus. Ooh. We find that, well, this person believes what I do politically and that is what unites us. Or this person is the same ethnicity, so they understand and that is what unites us. Mm-hmm. Or we're the same age or we have the same we grew up the same or have the same education. And the only thing, and this is the beautiful thing about the body of Christ, Jesus is what unites diverse people. 
Uh, Paul writes about it. We, are, we have one baptism. There is one spirit. Yes. There is one Lord. And we are united in Jesus. Um, we're adopted. God redeems all cultures. He redeems all people. We're adopted into a new family. It's only through Christ that we find unity. And as Revelation says, one day when we're in heaven, it will be every tribe and every tongue. So we had better get comfortable with it now <laughs> or else we may not be comfortable when we go to heaven. <laughs> that is like so good because I mean, that's, it's, we have to like reflect the kingdom. And you know, in 2020, it's like, you know, these past, this, the start of this decade, there's been so many shakings, you know, with things that's happening sure. in our nation. I just wanted to ask you, is there, can you share if you, you feel inclined to share, you're allowed to share just how you had to deal with those things. I mean, with the election, you know, we had the, the shootings. I mean, there's just been so much. So can you just share if there was a moment in your congregation where you had to just really sit and talk about these things? Yeah, um, so to, to give you some perspective, I certainly personally have experienced it. So I began my journey at ACAC as lead pastor in January of 2020. Wow. So having never been a lead pastor before, <laughs> following uh, Rock Dilliman, who was there for 36 years, um, and then three months in March, COVID hits. And we go through 2020 with COVID, with an election, um, with the George Floyd and all of the p uprising and the conversation around that. And um, it was a triple storm. And so uh, we navigated it. And, and I will be the first to admit, um, our congregation didn't always handle it well. Um, and so, yeah, there was a lot of really hard conversation. Um, not everybody saw eye to eye on any of those three things, but we continually came back and said, it is Jesus who unites us and the world is watching. And I think that for me, what was so painful and continues to be painful um, as we look at social media, as we look at the news and in the body of Christ, the world is watching. Yeah. And again, going back to John 17, Jesus knew that. And he said, the world is watching and they will know that I'm the son of God. They will know that the father loves me based on how you handle these things. It's not that we're looking for uniformity. It's not that we're looking um, that we all have to believe the same thing. We're going to have other opinions. We're going to have different perspectives. We, we grew up and have different educational backgrounds and, and have different family experiences. But it's through that we understand I'm laying that down because you're my sister in Christ. You're my brother in Christ. It's not about doctrine or theology or denomination. While those things may be secondarily important, we are a part of the kingdom of God and we need a model to the world that we're brothers, sisters in Christ and it is Jesus who unites us. I'm just thinking about, you said the world is watching. And I mean, that's, that's weighty to me. And that makes you think of the responsibility of me as an individual. You know, we talk about the church, you know, yes, the church has to represent it. You as a pastor have to represent it, but maybe what are some like key things you can encourage with our audience? Um, how do you, you know, how do you look for unity? How do you represent unity? Because we are the church outside of the four walls. Right. Well, let me preface that also by saying this, um, not every church um, is called and can be diverse like ACAC. Um, and, and that is one of the things that I also communicate with our congregation that we have to be really careful that while God has called us to be a diverse congregation, it's not possible for every church. Um, churches that are in homogeneous uh, communities, it's just unrealistic. Yeah. Um, and so we have to be careful that we don't become prideful or think that we have a corner or a market on, well, we've got this figured out. We don't, because the minute we do, we know God rejects yeah. the pride, <laughs> proud. So we talk, we talk about that. But uh, you know, I, I think one of the things, that's why I loved Pittsburgh Praise, um, because it gave our city a moment where we could come together. Uh, Matt, you were involved. I mean, you know, just, just the pastors and churches that were represented. Yeah. Um, and you could feel it, not that there was any, any tension, but we all have different beliefs and we worship differently. Our liturgy is worship, our doctrine is different. But for that day, for that moment, we represented to the city, it's not about me or my opinion. It's not about my church. We're not elevating this, we're elevating Jesus. And we're gonna come together and it may get a little uncomfortable, but that's okay. Because the last I checked, Jesus didn't call us to be comfortable. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, until we walk through it. Yeah, and so uh, I, the another way that I have seen division is when groups of people within the church are hurt by another group. Mm -hmm. And so can you just talk even a little bit about forgiveness, bringing people together? 
Yeah, and I, you know, going, I didn't directly answer your question, and this ties with, with Anne as well, but, um, you know, when you walk in diversity on a, on a daily basis, and that's one of the challenges at ACAC too, that it's, it's not about, well, I go to a diverse congregation, and I go to church on Sunday morning, and okay, that's, I'm walking in diversity. No, you're just attending a church service that's, um, and, we, and we have to walk through that. And so what does that look like? So when there are small groups or ministries, how do you, because we have people who drive in, again, maybe from areas of the city that aren't as diverse. So it, it can be challenging to, you just have to be really intentional. How do I build relationships and do life? And I, when you do that, and it's where you find, um, you find forgiveness. Um, because at some point, if you're walking in diversity, you're going to get rubbed the wrong way. <laughs> something is going to happen in our world. Something will happen in your life. Something will be said. Something will be, uh, um, you'll experience something that's going to rub you the wrong way. And in that moment, um, God and his spirit is going to have to work in, in with you about forgiveness. And, and I think just listening and understanding, I mean, for me as a lead pastor, um, I had been involved, never as a lead pastor, but a couple churches that I was involved in when I was in Texas were diverse congregations. But as a lead pastor, listening is, is just such a, an important um, component of things. When, when um, the injustices that we saw um, in our culture to hear and to listen and to go help me understand. There, were, there was a group that I called um, that I said, help me understand this help explain terminology to me. And, and I just had to listen. And so I think that really leads and it opens your heart up to God to work in you for forgiveness. Yeah, that's really powerful. I just like what you said about listening because I think we do a lot of talking, <laughs> but we're not listening. And then when you're in these moments, and I even believe that God is shaking our nation to be like, you all have to work this out because I'm after Conan I'm after that fellowship. There's something powerful about that. And as you were talking, Pastor Allen, I just really felt God was just saying, if you are watching right now and that you feel a prickling in your spirit or you have an offense towards your brother of a different background, a different political affiliation, whatever it may be, I just really feel in this moment to just take this time, wherever you are in your living room, your bedroom, wherever you're watching us from, if you're in Pittsburgh, you're in Florida, you're in Alabama or wherever you are, just to take this moment and ask for forgiveness from Jesus because we have all fallen short. We have all said things, we have all seen things and made our own assumptions and judgments and it's wrong. And it first begins with us. You know, a lot of us, I feel like we're saying like, oh, we wanna see the world change, but the solution is within us. And Pastor Allen, can you just take a minute just to pray for unity to be modeled yeah. in not only just in Pittsburgh and our city, but beyond. In the body of Christ, amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we remember your words in John 17, where you prayed for yourself that you would be glorified to the Father, where you prayed for your followers in that moment, and you prayed for us, and you took time to pray that we would be one, so that the world would know that you're the Son of God and that they would know your love. Father, I just first confess and admit that we have not done a great job of that, that we have failed you, and so, uh, we repent. Lord, we confess our inadequacies and our failures. But Lord, we now lean on you and we know that your spirit will enable us. So I pray that you would come. I pray for a move, as Sidney said, not just in ACAC, in my church, not just in this city and the churches here, but across your church with a capital C, that we would begin to live out the very thing you prayed for. I pray that you would begin to heal. I pray that you would break the walls that have divided and polarized us. I pray that, Lord, unbelievers would see us love each other so well that they would be drawn to our churches. I pray that they would know the Father's love in a way that they haven't before. So come and heal your land and heal your people. We need you now more than ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Pastor Allen, so good to have you on this show. And I want to encourage anybody watching, please share this with somebody because the message of unity is so powerful and so needed. But hey, we want to end this show off with a powerful way of looking at unity with worship together. The blessing as we did this in Pittsburgh, it caught like wildfire. Enjoy this video and we'll see you next time. The Lord bless